New Zealand and Iceland are on the brink of eliminating COVID-19 with close to zero active cases in both countries. Both are geographically isolated with small populations. Big advantages in fighting COVID-19. However, they've taken very different strategies with similar success. Let's start in New Zealand, which has had over 1,500 cases and 22 deaths. The Pacific Island nation of 5 million people implemented one of the toughest lockdowns in the world, shutting its borders, closing schools and workplaces. At its peak, New Zealand scored 96 out of 100 in Oxford University, University's stringency index, 100 being the toughest response. Well, the government, led by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, has received global attention for her clear and decisive action. Here's one headline from the New York Times. Jacinda Ardern sold a drastic lockdown with straight talk and mum jokes. The Prime Minister's message also focused on kindness, spreading road signs. It's a strategy that has worked. In the past 10 days, New Zealand has not recorded any new cases. Well, according to this study by New Zealand's Otago University, it's on track to declare itself COVID-free in three weeks' time. More from New Zealand's reporter, Paulina Lau. New Zealand has currently one active case of COVID-19 remaining and there have been no new cases confirmed for the past 10 days in a row. Um, I think the success has been largely down to the government's decision to go into full lockdown early on. Uh, new Zealand had its first case confirmed at the end of February and within a month uh, the country was in full lockdown at level four. Uh, what this meant was only essential services were running, so hospitals, pharmacies uh, and supermarkets. Everything else had to be closed, including any takeaways or food delivery services, uh, and people were urged to stay home. These rules were very, very clear. They were on TV, they were uh, on ad breaks, on radio and on online platforms as well. So it was very clear as to what people were and weren't allowed to do. Uh, New Zealand also closed its borders and any nationals returning home had to be put into mandatory quarantine. Uh, this meant that the government could contain the cases, uh, track any new ones and alert those who were affected and eliminate uh, community transmission. So when this was achieved, we moved out of level four lockdown and into levels with fewer restrictions. We've now been in level two for uh, just over two weeks and the economy has more or less opened up again. Everything is back up and running. Uh, People are still practicing social dis distancing, uh, including businesses. So uh, although it was a cautious and rather slow approach to begin with, it uh, seems to have paid off. Paulina Lau there. Well, New Zealand's strategy isn't the only successful one. Iceland, which has had 1,800 cases and 10 deaths, went down a different track. It never imposed any lockdown whatsoever and instead implemented a strict policy of test, trace and isolate. Cafes were kept open and only some businesses like nightclubs were shut. Well, according to that Oxford University stringency test, the Nordic country scored only 53 out of 100 for its measures. That's about half that of New Zealand. But it is a strategy getting international recognition. This New Yorker article says it didn't just manage to flatten the curve, it virtually eliminated it. Only a handful of active cases remain. Here's Icelandic journalist Bjorni Petter. The first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in Iceland on the 28th of February and the first cases all came with Icelandic tourists coming from skiing resorts in Italy and Austria. And from the, the very beginning, the main focus was on quarantine and, and rigorous testing. Iceland has now tested over 61,000 people for the virus. It's a, a higher proportion of the population than, than, than most other countries and only a handful have uh, tested positive in, in May. So. There are now only two active cases here. And I believe there are two main factors that made this possible. For one, the, the small island population. It's, it's easier to contain the virus here and, and much easier to create an atmosphere of, of, of empathy in, in, in smaller groups. And it came a thing here early, uh, quarantine, do it for the ones you love, stay at home. And also, uh, the politicians stepped aside and left it to the professionals. There were, there were daily briefings here, like, like everywhere else, and very rarely any politicians there. So that contributed in, in creating this common good vibe that, that got us through, at, at least for now. How Iceland has been dealing with the pandemic.